Welcome to the Math Art Project. This project connects our, us to the objective GCD 13. And this objective, of course, was where, and you've probably just completed it, uh, learned how to construct the inscribed square, the inscribed triangle, equilateral, and then the inscribed regular hexagon. These items, uh, just when you make them, I think you start to feel a little bit of that cool geometry in them and realize, hey, I could do something uh, interesting or have a little creativity with this. So this is a math art project and it's very open-ended. I just want you to use these tools to make something cool. That's it. I picked this up, the idea from a book I used long ago called uh, Creative Constructions. And you can see lots of uh, interesting designs there uh, to look at. And all they've done is use these and then build from there. If you just start with the basic hexagon, uh, it, this shows like lots of different things you can do. You can create all kinds of different designs just using that uh, very early premise. I don't want to show you too many because it's, it's about you coming up with your own. This is kind of a cool thing though. Uh, I'm not sure I'd have to think about this a little bit, how, how they came up with this uh, little design. But uh, obviously, you create the initial um, hexagon, begin to erase some lines, add some lines, do some shading, add some color, lots of cool things. I'm going to give you a little bit more information here using the computer and then using my uh, construction tools of a compass and a ruler, and then you'll be ready to go. This is the Math Art Project, and um, we want to just give you kind of an overview of uh, the idea of what to do and, and the foundations behind the project. This comes after GCD 13, that, that objective, which talks about inscribed uh, objects in a circle, like a hexagon or an equilateral. And um, the premise is, is that using that construction, there's lots of things you can create or that have real some symmetrical power to them, or if you use the right colors, a, a beautiful uh, look or design about them. And there's no particular right or wrong here other than just create something very appealing to the eye using your geometric tools. So you can see the hexagon here inscribed, and you can see the equilateral also in there inscribed. And depending on what you erase or hide, uh, you can make different things like any of these four diagrams that you're looking at. And there's lots of things. Uh, you can make this one. I've seen this one done where it's kind of one overlapping the other instead of on top of it like that. Anyways, quite cool. Um, and the premise is you'll start with a circle and then from there you'll do the hexagon construction and just build and, and design from there. Uh, let me show you a couple examples here. So here you can see that someone has uh, repeated that process many, 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 many times and allowed them to create lots of petals and then they chose how to design them. Do you see that hexagon there? I kind of outlined it earlier, but there's that hexagon that's hiding that uh, came from that original diagram. There it is there, very simple, and then uh, much more complex when we're looking at uh, this case. Here, this is the same thing, but they've shaded and done some fun things there. Um, this is, again, that premise of making the inscribed hexagon, and then from there, expanding, shading. This is a totally different beginning design based off of the inscribed square, which you also uh, learned and just did. And so maybe using it, uh, you might get a different cool design or layout. A few years ago, I did this um, as a computer program in a computer program called Geometry Sketchpad that you're looking at right now. And so it allowed students to do much larger designs. And these are just some pictures of them uh, and quite good in their design and color and form. These are things that can be done, certainly with a compass and a ruler as well, though. So here's the premise. I'll just do it quickly on a computer, and then we'll, I'll show you kind of some things by hand as well. But the idea is to construct that inscribed hexagon, at least initially. That's kind of like the backbone of your diagram. And then from there, you can go and do whatever you want. Do you see it hiding in there? Let me quickly outline that hexagon. There it is hiding in your diagram. And then um, from here, again, you don't have to highlight those things. You can draw in some new lines if you like. There's there's a cool little thing. Maybe, um, let's show you another thing you do. You could do like a midpoint of a side. You know the midpoint construction. 
You could do a perpendicular line, you know, a perpendicular line. And uh, meets right here. And so, I don't know, just make some new lines, see what you got. So, again, I don't, I don't know if I'm going anywhere in an artistic manner, but there you can see I'm starting to create some things and I could shade and design and do whatever. Let me show you just a few more things by hand here. And then I think you're ready to go and design your own. So let me just walk you through doing this by hand. So I've just created a basic circle here on a blank piece of paper. And then I'm going to create my hexagon design. Um, I'm going to move quickly. So there might be some slight error in my constructions. But I'm going to try and do this in as minimal time. So you can kind of get a sense of how to do it. All I'm doing right now is forming the circles. And normally we don't do the full circles. Normally we just do you know, part of them to create the hexagon. But I am going around doing the full ones. And the purpose for this is that it will help me to create um, other things that I could shade or design with. And you can start to see the petals arriving in the diagram, which I think is quite fun. They make uh, this diagram really quite interesting in terms of the artwork. So you can see what I've done. I've, I've created our hexagon, but I have expanded it to be more than just that. And in doing so, I've got options on design. So if I wanted to, I could just shade petals and I could continue working on the outside. Remember, this is a circle as well. And as long as you keep your compass fixed, you could continue to make hexagons and more petals in the exterior. Let me show you where that hexagon is just to make sure you see it. Um, not that you would have to physically draw these lines in in your design, but I wanted to just show you where they're hiding. And here they are. And there is our regular hexagon. Now again, those don't have to be a part of your design, but you could do lots of other things. You could connect lines from, uh, from the outside to the inside, forming triangles. Actually, they would be equilateral triangles. This would allow you, if you wanted to shade, just half petals. So you could do half petals in a particular color and so on. Um, another thing you could do is uh, to shade not the petal, but the inversion of the petal. So this part here uh, would create a pretty cool little design because it's not a very typical shape and so on. You could find midpoints and add more things. You could change your radius to something bigger. Uh, but you can start to see the power of this uh, math art project on its way. Use your construction tools and use your new constructions that you know, angle bisectors, perpendicular bisectors, lots of things you could do. Add some deep and rich colors, and you're going to have a great math project. Good luck with, uh, with the project.